welcome to the program Hidden Treasures, a program intended to clarify the doubts that come to our mind when we read the Holy Bible or when we listen to the readings from the Holy Scripture. We have with us a very renowned Bible scholar and a scripture professor, Reverend Dr. Michael Kadimitim, and we are happy to have his presence because to him we can address all these doubts and with all his vast experience and knowledge in the scripture, sure enough that we can get things clarified. Father, we are so happy to have you with us for this episode and as we have been doing it in the past, we begin with a question. And for this episode, the question comes in the context of a demand placed on all of us to be perfect. The problem is this. Of course, Jesus commanded, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, understood. In the ordinary context of human beings, we know a perfectionist is a problem in any society. Whether in the government level and those subordinates suffer because he's demanding. In an office, if someone is very oh, is a perfectionist, again, there will be a problem because people give up and they say we cannot manage and uh, we are human beings, you know, we are weak, we are not so qualified as you are, we are not really fine, uh, refined as you are. And naturally, it causes a problem. And when man is facing that particular difficulty in the ordinary level of his daily life, even the family, maybe the father is so demanding so perfect, maybe the mother is so perfect, and children say we cannot manage. See in this context, Father, this particular word of God, be ye perfect as you are. It's a comparison not with the human being. And if the comparison with human being, of course, somehow we can have excuse. But the comparison is very vast if you say a creature and a creator. And creature is expected to be perfect as the creator. How can that be? And therefore, Matthew 5.48, be, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And the meaning and how do we boil it down to the practical living of daily life? Yeah, very, very interesting and relevant question, I think. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. We have to keep uh, two things in mind. What does the word perfect mean? Does it mean all powerful as the Father is? All holy, created everything by his own word? All present everywhere, so omnipresent God, omniscient God, the perfection in knowledge, perfection. So while, what kind of perfection is meant here? That's the first thing. So the word used is teleios. Teleios that is, is from perfect. Greek or from, like from the Greek, Greek word, word. Teleios. Tele, you know, uh, tele, um, it's not a tele. Teleios means perfect. Uh, telos is the end. The, so teleios is something that is suitable to reach the goal for which it is made. A book, a paper is perfect, white paper is perfect when it is pure white, when I can write. Write down. Um, the my glasses they are perfect because we can see because clearly. I can see, see I can clearly. read with it. So the object it suits the purpose. Uh, it suits the purpose. purpose. So means so you should be perfect in such a way for which God has made you. So your life, your consequent behavior, everything should be suitable to the goal, to the vocation for which you are made. So that is the one thing. The pray telling you is perfect. And then goes on to say, as your father is perfect. So what is the comparison? So then I think um, we have a normal um, law of exegesis or Bible interpretation. Interpret or understand the text in its context. The context explain to you the text. Now please take. Take that context in which these words comes. Uh, the um, Matthew four, uh, Matthew um, five, Matthew 40, five forty eight. Uh, please, uh, that starts from forty four, I think. Yeah, or forty three. For the yeah, paragraph fact, starts from forty three. Please read yeah. the whole passage. That is Gospel of Matthew, chapter five, verse forty three onwards, and the title is "Love Your Enemies." Okay, love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, "You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy," but I say to you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, 
For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same. And if you salute only your brethren, what more are you doing than the others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. You, therefore, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Don't close it. Keep it there. Now, don't close the book. You, yeah, okay. <laughs> you need it. Okay. Um, so now, is last time we were sp speaking about the love of the enemy. And here, uh, the perfection is somehow presented in the context of love. No, no any other context. So be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And what is the quality, characteristic the father is given? What, please read, you, what is it? That what is, is the nature of the father there? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your father. Son of father yeah. who? Who is in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the just and on the and unjust. That is the problem. Don't close the book. So be, so you are a child of God, and usually, and, and what kind of a God? No, no, you have also children. So if you go to the DNA, you can decide whether it is your children yeah. or not. That is very possible. The paternity will be proved. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you are a child of the Father, you should know, should should have the nature of the Father, or else you are a spurious son. So if you are, if you are children of God, the children of God should show the character of the Father. That's where the perfection comes in. So the more you uh, come closer in nature, your behavior, your thought, your, your um, aspiration, the closer you become. So the perfection is in becoming similar to the Father. And only one nature, he's speaking not about creating the sun, or shedding the or rain, yeah. but he doesn't make any distinction. When the sun rises, it rises on the evil as well as on the good. Not for the, the sun, oh no, this is sun, it's mine, it's only for the good, no. He gives everything. So he doesn't make a distinction between good and evil. And you should also see the contrast. See how the passage started. You have heard. Yeah, you have heard that it was said. Ah. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. See, Jesus is bringing a new law, a new covenant, a new understanding. See, the whole um, chapters 5 to 7 is presented as the new covenant, the conditions of the new covenant. Jesus is sitting on the, on the mountain. He goes up the mountain. The disciples come. He sits there and he teaches. As Moses went up the mountain to receive the covenant and the commandments. So here we come the new covenant, the new commandments. So Jesus is the new Moses. And then see the comparison. So what is new is going beyond, much beyond the old. Not exactly you should hate the enemy. But then this is what Jesus is bringing new. There is no more enemy. Everybody. It's not only the people of Israel, but also the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Romans, and everybody is, belongs to God. So consider all as your neighbor. That's what Jesus asked, who is my neighbor? He came, came the parable of the Good Samaritan. So all these distinctions of class and race and religion have been abolished. All are children's, God, uh, God's children. So you should love as God loves them. So there is the perfection comes. And then this is the love. And we, yesterday we saw what is the love means. It's not liking, it's not having an affection, it's not a natural tendency. Do will wish only the good of the other. Love the other person, other person's sake. And the more you do that, the more similar you come. So then you become perfect, teleus. But there, since there is a possibility of misinterpretation, the same text has been interpreted by Luke. If you go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, uh, 34 to 36, I think. Um, Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 32 onwards. If you love those who love you, what credit is it that you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those, who, for those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? 
even sinners led to sinners to receive as much as gain. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return. And, you, and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful even as your father is merciful. So you see the, don't, don't close it. Um, you see what is the reward given to this? What is the reward promised? If you do this, what is the reward? The reward will be the children of your father. Yeah. You'll be so you will be sense. acknowledged, you will be acknowledged as God's child. Well, well done. You are my child. Your identity is made yeah. clear. Because you have my genes, my compassion. So Luke is using a word, mercy or compassion, not the perfection. Tetelagos. Here, oikthirmenos is the word I have written there, oikthirmenos. And that, that's a Greek word. That comes from the Hebrew. The Hebrew word is rahamim. Rahamim, raham. You know, Allah Rahman, they yeah, call it Rahman, Rahami, Raham. And that again comes from the, from the root Rechem. Rechem means the womb, the womb of a mother. So Rahamim is the feeling a mother has towards an unborn child. The child is totally dependent on the mother. Mm. The child cannot eat, the child cannot breathe, nothing. So. The, and her, the child's heart beats with the same rhythm of the mother's heart. So that is a relation of God to the humans. That is harachamim, that is compassion. So this is what Jesus is asking, that you have to love. So the mother loves the child, it's nat it becomes natural for her. So such a thing should be yours. You be compassionate as your heavenly father is compassionate. Only in this selfless giving, total giving love, you are expected to imitate. And the reward is only thing. You will be acknowledged yes, as sir. God's children. Seven. What else do we need? Nothing more. What greater reward can I get? Nothing more than what is this. This is, I am God's child. Come, blessed of my father, Jesus said, no? Come and inherit the kingdom that you have been prepared for you from the beginning of the ages. So that's what Jesus is telling. If you love, if you forgive, if you share without expecting anything in return, then that is what God expects of you. That's how you become perfect, perfect in love. So it's not the, the total power, the holiness or whatever you call the manifest in the magnificent, the glory of God or anything. Only one small little thing, love. And that love without measure, love without borders, without frontiers. And that's what Christianity means. So very often we have a tendency to love, to have clusters, to have get groups to, and to gangs. Yeah, yeah. And that even in the church it comes, so you have your own groups, of course groups are good to work. But if you are close in yourselves, your love only those who are of your opinion. That's what happens in the, in the politics. So when a political party comes into power, all the dependence of that party gets all the favors, the others are being persecuted. The same thing happens also in clubs, factories, firms, everywhere. But Jesus wants something to transcend all these borders and limitations. Love without frontier. So love without border. No limitation, no retaliation, whatever may happen, I love you. And by that love, you become a child of God and gradually it is the hope that the other person also realize. And it is very, very common that, and I have also my experience, once you forgive a person who knows that you have offended you somehow, unconditionally forgive, then you see a friendship growing up. You can retaliate, you can fight and defeat, but you destroy a person, you destroy yourself. But forgiving, forgiving is giving. Giving for the other. You give for yourself for the other. So that makes you grow. That makes you perfect. It may not make you rich. It may not give you a status in the society. You may not be considered as a great person, but before God, 
you are great. The richness is what God considers you. Yeah, that's what my they, child, my yeah. my children. Yeah, that is what God wants. That is what Jesus said. That is what Jesus did on the cross. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. You could ask, is it true? Did they not know what they are doing? They knew exactly what they are doing. Both the religious as the political leaders. The religious leaders knew that he was performing miracles and he has proved his claim, but they could not accept it. And before Pilate, Jesus was put on trial several times and before Herod, he was put on trial. Also, the five trials. First before Annas, then before Sanhedrin, the early morning in the Sanhedrin, and then before Pilate, and then he had or six times in fact. In both political and religious courts, and then in the political courts it was found he was innocent. I find no guilt in him. I let him go free. If you let him go free, you are the enemy of Caesar, he said, because he, anyone who makes himself king is an enemy of Caesar. So Pilate knew what he was doing. He knew that he was handing over an innocent person to a, to a death that is a penalty for a crime, which is not true. So they, Jesus knew that they knew what they are doing. But the question is, did they really knew? Did they really know who this Jesus is? Because they could not understand this person. Of course, there were signs. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead who was three days in the, the tomb. But then the claim that I and Father are one, that I am God, so to say, that they could not take. Are you the Messiah, the son of the living God? I ask in the name of the most holy, blessed one. And Jesus said, you said it. And you, I'll tell you, you see the son of man seated on the right hand of the father and coming with the clouds. So that for him, there was a very clear declaration of equality with the God. Then the high priest tears his clothes and said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. What do you think? He is worthy of death. So the fact is, they did not really know exactly who he was. It was impossible for them. A person who was brought up in such a strict monotheistic religion cannot accept another person as a human being coming, standing, I am God, that they could not. So they did not really know who Jesus is. The same way, Pilate could not understand a kingdom that is not of this world. He asked, are you the king of the Jews? Of course you said. But my kingdom is not yes, of this world. So what is a kingdom that is not of this world? A pagan a ruler like Pilate could not understand a kingdom that is not of this world. So they exactly did not know. They actually did not know what they are doing. They did not know that Jesus is the son of God. They did not know that Jesus is the king of the kingdom of God. So actually we think they know. But Jesus is, they do not know. That's why Jesus is asking, Father, forgive them because they do not know. So, so the, here comes the nature of God. That's how Jesus says, be compassionate, love your enemy as I love. So he, this, is not, this is the perfection, not in the omnipotence or anything. The perfection in love, that is agape. That's a trial. That is to be uh, tried to continue and grow. Father, as you said, it is, uh, it's the agape, the compassion, the mercy, the love, forgiving love, the perfection. Yeah. At the same time, where do you find a provision for the conformity or strict adherence rules and regulations? Mm -hmm. If not done or if not adhered to, mm -hmm. that would be considered as not really being perfect. We are talking in the context of any any society. So I think, Babu, that is the whole problem. Because the that's an area where people misunderstand the word, you know, being perfect. Yeah. But they miss the core of what yeah. God wants to bring them to. You know, that what happened to the Pharisees. <laughs> They took the law strictly in its real strict sense and very strict for um, observers, but they forgot the heart. You keep, like the Samson, keeping the seven bunches of uh, air on his head and losing the heart of the vow, that is fidelity to God. The same, you have the externalities of all the religion, but the heart is not there. So when you, that's what the present Pope is doing. Go to the out. I like a church that is somehow dirty rather than one who is in the, in the closet. So there is a possibility. The freedom is there, but that freedom is not without any law. There is one law, yeah. and the one law is love your enemy as God loves you.
So this should be motivated and also you are doing it not for your personal gratification or any benefits, only because God has called me. This is a person suffering in this particular situation. I have to go and help. So the laws are for, that's what Jesus said, the Sabbath is for man, not man for Sabbath. Doesn't mean that you can, you can violate any law, what you want, but that's also maybe another, another theme for a discussion. But here, love is supreme. And that if you want to read the, uh, the letter to Corinthians chapter, yeah. what, chapter 13, <clears throat> love. So not self-seeking, totally giving, forgiving, patient. Gentle, patient, yeah, not so irritable. That, that is, that's how you base, become perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. True. Father, this particular word, of course, as you explained, it comes to a very uh, fine understanding, which is not normally understood. Not because people don't understand the word, but... Uh, it's something very striking to the heart in particular when you have explained um, that the perfection is actually you have the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is the compassion and the love that is forgiving. It is in that context the perfection is demanded or mm -hmm. perfection yeah, is right. to be decided for. Mm -hmm. And that gives a clarity actually. And therefore the striving of human beings should be to be perfect in this aspect in whatever context in which he lives. Is that right, Father? Yeah, but there is a problem. There is a problem also. And I think these uh, people are very often misunderstanding. Can you love the atheists? Can you love the uh, fanatics? Coming to that. Yeah. Can you love the fanatics? Can you love people who kill the other because you belong to another party or you belong, you believe in another God, you have another name? Can you love them? Uh, can you be compassionate to them? He said, yes, you have to. Even, and that's what Jesus said, if one strikes you on the right show cheek, show the other cheek. Too. Show the other. And if you strikes on the other, show the next again. So there is no limit. Peter came and asked, Master, how often should I forgive my enemy? Seven times? 77 times. No, not 77. 70 times seven, seven. times. That's infinite. Whenever a person comes and asks pardon, forgive. So there is no limit to forgiveness. There is no limit to compassion. And maybe it can, it's not a, it's not a political law. There is not a political prudence that Jesus is telling. And maybe that's what the church is also facing now. There are religions that advocate um, hatred, enmity, destruction, kill. If you don't believe in my God, I'll kill you. So the warrior, the, the, the valiant, the aggressive, murderous, fanatic religions. That's not what Christianity is. That is what was going to, were happening in the first centuries. The Christians did not fight back. Even when there were more than 10% of the military were under were Christians, they did not fight back. Sebastian was the, uh, no, was the Stephen, uh, Stephen. Uh, I mean, chief, chief, uh, chief of uh, on the um, army of Diocletian. Nobody fought back. There was no rebellion. They tried. They gave their life. So how long it can go? So that's a very practical political question. Jesus said, go. And you see, the more you are hated, and the more you suffer, see what is happening in Odisha. What happened? More than 100 churches were uh, destroyed. Burned. Thousands of houses were um, destroyed. burned down. More than a hundred person had been killed, many. But what is happening now? It's flourishing. There are more Christians now in Odisha before this, uh, as before that. Because we are not dominating anybody. This is a spirit, the spirit of God. And so only if the seed, the, we, the seed it falls to the, to the ground and dies, it will bring forth. So the power of Christianity is not in the power of money, not in the power of weapons, it's in the power of love. And the love never hates nobody. So that is what Jesus is telling. Be as good as you are having. It's difficult, of course. Easy way. Partisanship. You make your groups and they make your um, borders as somebody is doing, try to put a border to the wall around the, the country. You isolate yourself. So what Jesus is telling, be if you want to be a child of God, if you want to call God our father is the prayer of our father. Then you should have the nature. Because God doesn't hate anybody. 
Maybe we can, uh, another question, does God hate anybody? So as far as I understand, nobody is hated. If someone say, a vote to you, as we say, already said, it's not because he hates. You are so miserable, your situation, you are out. Because you're standing out, the door is going to be closed now. So I think this is what the love perfection means. Thank you, Father. We have been discussing a very relevant topic because this particular demand made in the gospel be perfect comes hard on all of us. But seen in the context, what exactly that means, being perfect, is not as we thought it to be, just some conformity and they were being strict with that. Rather, whether we have the nature of our father, where we have the, that identity. If that is not the identity, we are not perfect. Therefore, perfection would mean the love, the compassion, the emptying love, the forgiving love that is manifested in the very attitude, in the very existence in which we are. And therefore, let this make us be renewed of our mind to be perfect. A demand, but then we know the context and therefore we accept it very easily and we strive for it. God bless you all. Thank you for watching this program. If you have any doubt or any question that comes up in your mind regarding any passage or context of the Bible or someone else asks you, you're free to write to us or contact us in the following email address that you see on the screen. Hiddentreasures.dtv at gmail.com See you for the next episode and let the Spirit of God work in you and be very active. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you.